Hello and welcome to another Prickly Pear Camera video. My name is Kevin, and today we're going to be going through boxes number six and boxes number seven of the giant 14 box $2,000 order that I made of untested cameras and camcorders. We are currently sitting at a value so far of the cameras that I've tested and are working of $1,819 for the $2,000 order. Our target for the entire order is $6,000. So hopefully these two boxes will move us along the path to getting closer to that target. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, lots of lenses and stuff in here. Wow. Let's do a quick little sneak peek here for y'all. It looks like almost entirely lenses and some SLR film bodies for this box. So we haven't really done a whole lot of that so far for the first five boxes. So it'll be kind of a, a nice change of pace. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that on the ground here and then we will go through them. All right, let's go. Ooh, we'll pull what's on the top first. Got a Canon 35 to 80, one four to 5.6 lens, which is a Canon EF mount, either SLR or DSLR camera lens, red dot. So I keep a couple of tester bodies, uh, DSLR camera bodies close by to test lenses that I get in case the bodies that come with aren't working. So I'm gonna grab my Canon real quick that I keep by. Just a Canon Rebel XT DSLR camera in pretty rough shape. So not much value in this, but it is good enough to test and see if the lens are wor lenses are working. Lens glass looks okay. Let's uh, see if autofocus works. And it looks promising so far. Yeah. Then I'm gonna flip it into manual. And just make sure that the manual functionality is working well. Sometimes with older lenses, you'll see that as you manually focus, there's a lot of hesitation and there could be dust or dirt or grime built up in there. So this one looks decent. I've sold a lot of this lens over the years and the value on this lens is gonna be about $40. So 40 bucks here. Okay, let's move on. Got another Canon lens here, Canon 28 to 80, 3.5 to 5.62. Uh, this lens has a little bit of wear on it, but overall looks decent. Let's uh, give it a test as well. This is a nice start. These are I love getting lenses because they're really easy to test, as long as you have the right body form. Oh, it's an auto. Okay, yeah, autofocus works. Let's try manual. Yeah, manual works too. So this lens is working fine. Just clean off the dust on there real quick. So this lens is overall in, I would say, fair to good condition. And the value on this lens is going to be between $40 and $45. I'll go ahead and call it $45. This is a rip roaring start compared to the last few boxes. Okay, we got a Canon Speedlight 277T flash. The most common issue that I see with this style of flash is because these have often had batteries inside for many, many, many years. The likelihood of these working is actually quite low. So this one appears to have the battery compartment completely corroded because it can't even open it with a reasonable amount of force. So this is one I'm gonna have to see if I can get working later, but I guarantee you it just is full of nasty old battery acid. So no value on this one. Another flash. This is a Minolta Maxim 2800 AF flash. Let's see how the, yep, this one's got quite a bit of battery acid inside. Let's see if we can uh, kind of show that there and on the tray as well. So this is gonna go into a pile of electronics that have battery corrosion. And what I try to do is actually group all of that stuff together and test it at the same time. Just makes it easier for me in the workflow that I have. So we'll test this one later. Um, odds of it working probably aren't high. Okay, ooh, really, really sticky uh, Sigma 70 to 210 millimeter lens. The rubber uh, coating has corroded to a point where it's super tacky and sticky. And you see this a lot, especially if lenses are stored in humid or moist environments. 
for long periods of time, they can actually get stuck to the bag or whatever they're stored in. So this one appears to have that kind of issue. Let's see if the barrel rotates. Oh, the see the, ew, kind of stuck to my finger there. Yeah, this doesn't look promising. So I'll test this one later, but um, that stuff's super hard to get off. Okay, we've got a 70 to 300 millimeter, one four to five point six. It's got the hood on it. Adds a, just a little bit of value normally, more so on uh, branded lenses like Canon, Nikon, Sony, etc. So this baby, uh, barrel moves in and out smoothly. Lens has a bit of dust on it, but otherwise seems to be okay. All right. So we've got a the the Sigma 70 to 300 millimeter here, and I just brought out a Canon Rebel body to test the lens with. So we're gonna put that on. Mounts good. And we will try it out. What do I do when I test lenses? Uh, I try to shoot at a few different focal lengths just to test and make sure that it's zooming properly the whole way through and then it's focusing properly. This lens has a macro mode, so if you wanted to, you could test the macro just to ensure that the... Um, works. Whoa, cool. Macro mode's kind of neat. Hmm. So it fixes the fo focal length really, really far out. So I'll move it back down to normal. The autofocus is working. Lens is a little bit noisy. That's very common. So this lens in decent working condition like it is, is going to have a value of about 35 to $40. And I'll go ahead and say $40 here. This will work with nearly every Canon DSLR camera. Okay. Coming up next, we've got a Minolta Maxim 7000. Grip is falling off as I bring it out. Very, very common. Um, yeah, that's, that's rough. Okay, let's see what the battery area looks like. Here's the battery area. Nervous? Yeah. Quite a bit of corrosion inside. Gross. So this is going to be something that I'm going to have to work on. A couple of the viewers out there said that you're able to find replacement or maybe make your own replacement grips because this is a very common issue with older Minoltas. So that could be something if you're a, a fix-it type person that you would be able to do. I will try to see if I can get that cleaned up and put it with the other cameras that have the acid and the issues, and we'll see if we can get that tested. The good news is this has a removable 50 millimeter Minolta 50 millimeter 1.7 lens. Sold this, I sell one of these almost every week it feels like. Very, very common lens that was provided with a lot of Minolta bodies that were sold throughout the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. So I'll test that lens here in a second. No value on the body. So this mount uh, is the same for the Minolta series uh, SLR cameras, some Minolta DSLR cameras, as well as the Sony A mount of DSLR cameras. This lens will not work with the Sony E mount mirrorless cameras. So we'll go ahead and put it on. Let's see if the autofocus works. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. So I'll get this lens cleaned up, get the rubber cleaned up a little bit, and then throw on uh, replacement caps. And the value on this lens, uh, once I get it cleaned up, is actually going to be about 30 bucks. If this was in really good condition, you might be able to get 35 to 40. But 30 bucks for this Minolta. 160. Yeah, see, we already hit our, uh, our per box cost whenever you break down that $2,000 into those 14 boxes. It's going to be around 140, 150 bucks. Okay, Sony, uh, let's see, Sony HVL F, let's find out together, F36 I think? Yeah, HVL F36. This is a Sony branded flash that fits into the hot shoe of Sony cameras. So this is really more proprietary for Sony. These actually have a decent amount of value in really good working condition. I've sold these for, you know, 40 to 60 normally. Um, 
Again, has a, often has a lot of, yeah, often has a lot of acid and battery problems. So this is one I'm gonna have to add into the pile to test later and see if we can get this into working condition. What do we got in here? Ew, that looks like peanut butter that like dried a really long time ago, or maybe glue, I don't know, pretty gross. Ooh. Maybe I should wear gloves when I do this kind of thing. Thought about it, but I wash my hands a lot. Ooh, nice. It's got a Canon uh, cap, which is good, unless they replaced it, but it looks like a Canon lens. It is a Canon FD 50mm 1.8 SC lens. This is a lens that was often used with the Canon A1 AE1 SLR bodies. And I've sold a bunch of these. The, the glass looks good. The barrel moves smoothly. Let me remove the rear cap here. This has a, uh, let's see. This appears to have a little bit of haze underneath the rear element. The way that you're able to tell if it's haze is if you look through the lens and you see what appears to be many, many, many fine dust specks inside. That can be uh, haze. And what that actually can do is affect the picture quality, depending on the lighting conditions that you're shooting in. It may not always, it may never. It just depends on the light coming in as to how much it would actually affect the picture quality. Very common with older lenses. I mean, this lens is probably close to 40, 40 years old. So it's been around for a long time and I don't know what sort of conditions it was kept in. The front last glass looks good. If this was in a uh, good condition with no haze, you'd be looking at a value of around 50. But with the haze, it actually still has a little bit of value. This lens with the haze, it's gonna have a value of about 25 to 30. I'll go ahead and go with the lower end and say 25. And if you were to sell a lens like this, you just want to disclose that uh, and try to get as many pictures as you could that uh, detailed that. Another lens. Ooh, okay. Now this is interesting. It says Minolta UW Rocor PG. And it's on some sort of adapter here as well. It says uh, UW Rocor PG 19.5 F equals 18 millimeter. So I think this might actually be like a fisheye. Yeah, it is. Wow, that's neat. You don't come across these very often actually. All right, I just took off the adapter, which was just a 2X teleconverter. These don't have much value. I'll put that off to the side. Does have haze, gosh darn it. Oh. Man, that's so cool. Look how tiny the blades are in this thing. They're so small. I don't even know if you can, like, that's wild. That's wild how small that is. And it's working. The aperture, the blades are moving smoothly. The downside is we've got haze and it looks like the haze may be inside both rear and front elements. Let's see. No, there's not. I actually think that the front looks okay. Yeah, quite a bit of haze underneath the rear element there. So that's gonna affect the value quite a bit, fortunately. But this lens is very uncommon. Uh, I'm gonna have to look up the value of this and get an idea. I have sold a few, but it's been years since I've seen one of these. I said this on the last video, but what I do to establish value if I haven't sold it, and I've sold a lot of things and I have a spreadsheet that goes back seven years that has all of my sold history. So I'm able to see actual sale prices, but because I haven't sold this particular model, I don't think, um, I'm gonna go to eBay. You can also use sites like uh, Terrapeak. We have listings of the same lens from $150 to $550. So let's go to filter and see what's actually sold. I always try to go to sold items. You can further filter down so you can actually get an idea of what's sold. So two of this exact same lens in what looks to be quite good condition sold one for 250 and one for 290. But this lens in its current condition with the haze in the rear element, you're looking at a much, much lower value. 
um, I would put the value in its current condition fully disclosed of somewhere around 50 bucks. So still not bad, but in, in pristine condition, this would have been 250. Neat, really cool lens. Someone was asking in my YouTube comments where the gold nuggets were and we haven't found any yet. This could have been one, but still 50 bucks for uh, a lens that's easy to, easy to ship is not a bad deal at all. Next thing, we've got a Sears 3X teleconverter. These have very little standalone value, uh, <laughs> like five, 10 bucks. So normally what I try to do is group this together in a lot of like products. It looks like this is a Canon FD mount. So you could like pool all of your stuff together and list it that way, which is probably what I'll do. Ooh. Well, look at that. Sony A200 DSLR camera, 10 megapixels, I believe. I sell this camera model quite a bit. Sony produced this for a number of years and it was really really popular kind of competed alongside the like canon rebel xsi and rebel t1i and the d3000 it was in that uh, time period uh, but this camera looks to be in decent condition uses compact flash for memory and a sony npf uh, fm50 battery lcd has a little bit of wear um, but otherwise not too bad Battery? Oh, I was wrong. It's not the Sony MP-FM50, it's the Sony MP-FM500, which is almost exactly the same battery. I think just different milliamp hours and a slightly different um, setup on the back. Sony MP-FM500 replacement battery? Check. Compact flash memory card. Oh, let's try one of these new ones. Just bought a bunch of uh, 256 megabyte compact flash cards that I provide with most of my DSLR cameras that use compact flash memory. Um, they've gotten more expensive. I just paid like three or four bucks a pop for these and it's a low, low capacity. Okay, power's on, that's a good start. You'll love to see it, you'll love to see it. We've got power. It has an LCD screen protector on there. Take that off. Get that cleaned up a little bit. Wow, this is actually really in quite nice condition. Look how clean that LCD is. It looks really good. Okay. Format the memory real quick. My guess is this camera works. Yep. All right, it has a little uh, cleaning thing, so you hear a brrrr when it turns on and off. That's natural. It's kind of cleaning dust off the sensor. So I always take off the lens and inspect it. Lens glass looks good, just needs to be cleaned. Same with rear. And just make sure that it's moving smoothly, which it is. So this camera is in good working condition. And this camera, the Sony A200 with the 18 to 70 millimeter lens, normally sells for around 100 to 125, depending on what's included. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign a value on this camera of 110, the Sony A200. Wow, yeah, things are, things are looking up. Things are looking up. Another Minolta flash, Minolta Auto 220X, has battery acid and corrosion. So not gonna be much value here until I try to affix it, which hopefully we can. If this was tested in working condition, still not much value, maybe like 10 bucks. Batteries in the battery spot. All right, moving on. We have a newer, I think it's newer, N-E-E-W-E-R which is an aftermarket brand of flashes, mainly flashes. They also do battery grips and batteries and some other stuff. And they've actually started to get into video production and lighting that way. So, oh, battery compartment looks good. 
So that's nice. Let's go ahead and put some AA batteries in and see if it uh, works. A lot of the flashes have a test button, which is handy if you don't have a body. But I still try to test these on camera bodies just to ensure that they're functioning in the appropriate manner. The blue light did come on. So that's a good start. It's already set to on. And the red light came on for power, which means we should be able to test. Whoa, yeah, working. Cool, I'll still test this on a body just to double check. But I like to save these actually. I don't really sell these that often. Um, if I have an overwhelming amount, I will. But oftentimes I run across Canon and Nikon bodies that have flash issues with the internally built in flash. And then if I have one of these on hand, I can just pair it with that camera and then sell it as working because with this flash actually has a substantially better flash capacity than the onboard flashes. So I will put a little bit of value on this. Even new, these weren't very much, but the value on this is about 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Missing the back plate. Another Minolta, Minolta Program 2800 AF flash, but missing that. So we'll see if we can get this working. Probably has battery recursion too. Yeah, it's really bad battery recursion. No value there. Ooh, what's this? What's this? What's this? There's something in the air. I don't know if that's how the words go, but Nightmare Before Christmas. One of my favorite movies. Ooh. Oh, it's a cannon. Okay, so we've got a Canon uh, 20 to 300, which is like a general like walk around lens that covers, it has a really nice zoom, but also is capable of shooting pretty up close at 28 millimeters. So pretty useful lens, really. It's a Canon uh, EF mount. So I put it on there and let's see if it works. And I'm in auto right now. Very, very noisy autofocus. I don't know if you can hear that. It is focusing. Let's try one more. Yeah, it is working. It's just very noisy. So that's something that is going to reduce the value a decent amount. And it would be something that you would want to note if you were to sell a lens like this. So in its current condition, uh, with the lens noise, the, the barrel looks good and there's no haze or mold inside. So we've got a lot going right for this lens. It's just kind of noisy. So the value on this guy in its current condition is going to be right around 60 bucks. I think with that, we just passed, passed like 400 on that on this box so far. So it's looking good. Got some chargers here. Okay, I think I got all the chargers. We've got another Sony. This is for the Sony NPBK1 battery which is for a Sony digital point and shoot Digicam. It also works with the Olympus Li50B battery to charge. So these three are handy and nice to have. We've got a Canon charger. I think this is for the Canon NB1L, um, which is for older, for like first generation Canon PowerShot digital cameras. And we've got a Panasonic here for a Lumix camera. So value on these, we'll sign a value of six bucks a pop. And we've got five. So you're looking at $30 in value in the chargers. Got another, so, or actually rather Minolta, uh, 50 millimeter 1.7. This is the same prime lens that we had from earlier. The same model, obviously a different lens, but in similar condition, still has the very common wear on Minolta rubber. All right, let's see if this guy works. Oh yeah. Okay, it's focusing fine. I'll uh, flip it over to manual. Yep, looks good. Glass looks good, just need to clean it. Value on this lens is gonna be about 30 bucks. Same as the last one. Thank you, test body. Okay, what's in this little pouch? We've got 
a Minolta. So we've got the Minolta XG1 here. And cosmetic condition looks pretty decent, actually. No film inside. This is what the back looks like. It does have a fair amount of residue, which is fairly common with uh, older SLR film cameras, unfortunately. Um, so I don't have a battery to test this guy. Um, but these have actually, I've noticed, and I don't, I don't sell many of Minolta SLR film bodies, but I have noticed their value seems to be going up. So if this was tested in working condition with a Minolta MD lens, I think the value is like 50, 75 if it's actually tested. So I need to do a little more digging on this and see if I can get her tested. Uh, but yeah, th that would be cool if, if it was working. If not, then I would just sell it as is untested and the value on this would be about 20. So on the lower end, I'm gonna go ahead and do 20. Oh yeah, here. Oh, another, some batteries and a lens. Canon NV4L charger and a really fat bloated and uh, Fujifilm NP45. That is not good. Normally if batteries are in decent condition and usable condition, I will reuse them. So that's cool. We'll use that one for a Canon PowerShot camera. And the Canon wide converter WD58. Probably goes, yeah, 58 millimeter thread. Okay, glass looks good. Just need to clean it a little bit. Let's check the rear. Yeah, rear looks good. I don't think this was used very much. This is actually pretty nice glass. Um, the value on this lens in good condition, uh, I just looked up and I saw some solds that were in really good condition between 40 and 60, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a value on this one of 30. So Canon WD-58. Uh, we've got a Minolta AF 35 to 70 millimeter. And I've sold this one a fair amount as well. So let's go ahead and put it on this Sony body here. Engaged. Oh, I left it on. Oh, I set it to manual. Flip it to auto. Ooh, yeah, it looks good. Nice. And it was working in manual as well. Okay, yeah, just get that rubber uh, cleaned up a little bit and uh, the slums would be in ready to roll. Not as much value as that uh, 50 millimeter Minolta on this one. Um, this 35 to 70 F4 lens is gonna sell for 20 to 25. I'll go on the lower end of 20. Ooh, what's this? Super De Jour MC 135 millimeter f 2.8 lens for Contax Yashica. Potentially a little bit of mold in there as well. So all of that doesn't uh, doesn't bode well. So I'm not going to assign a value to this, but this is one that you could always put into uh, like a four parts lens lot, and people that are more inclined and have the aptitude to fix can uh, can fix them. That's the thing I've realized over the years is there's people everywhere in this life cycle of electronics. Got a Canon 18 to 55. This is the kit lens for the Canon Rebel XT. So let's put it on with the Canon Rebel XT. Nice. You can tell pretty quickly if the lens is gonna work. If it's got that crisp autofocus, even with a little bit of dust inside, a dust on the glass. So get that cleaned up. Normally I don't sell these because I get a bunch of bodies in without lenses and I like to put them together. So, but there is a value on this lens. This lens in good working condition on eBay is about 35 bucks. So we've got a 19 to 35 contacts, I think. Okay, neat. So this is a, a kind of a cool wide angle 19 to 35 lens. 
and I'm gonna see if I can test it later. If this was in tested working condition, it's a ProMaster. There's a lot of aftermarket brands that made 19 to 35s, including ProMaster and Vivitar. Uh, and their value isn't as good as if this were a actual name brand. Um, but they still do have a little bit of value. So the value on this guy, if it is tested and working, probably be in the $40 range. Only got one thing left in here. And it's a beefy Nikon N8008 with a cracked top LCD. And missing the battery tray. And there's rust on it. It doesn't look promising. This is going to go in the four parts area. And I won't assign a value to it. So that box actually was pretty good. Let me run, uh, run, and s run through these and see what we got so far. So that box was pretty decent. That box came in at $610 with estimated value. And the estimated value is what I think I it would end up actually selling for uh, on eBay within a reasonable amount of time. Per box purchase cost of around 150 leaves a couple hundred dollars of profit once you factor in all the expenses of shipping costs of uh, packaging commissions that you would pay to the marketplace that you're selling on. That all adds up. That all adds up big time. So um, this is a box that's going to get us moving in the right direction. We've crossed the threshold of $2,000, which was the purchase price. And we've got one more box to do in this video. So let's move on to the next one. Here we go. Box number seven. I'm gonna set it down and pull them out. First thing is this weird little Z-Moto. It's not in very good condition. I'm gonna have to test this one later. Whenever I get stuff that's not in my wheelhouse, I also put it aside and then try to go through everything at once and ascertain value and see if it's worth testing to figure out what's going on. So I'll do that with this guy. It's a Vivitar. Uh, inexpensive film camera. It looks like it uses a single AA battery. Turn it on and see if it works. Ooh, I heard it. I heard the flash. Did you hear it? High-pitched whine. High-pitched whine. That's what my mom and dad probably told me a lot when I was a kid. Hmm. All right, I don't know. I'll try to test that one later. If it's working, I'll probably donate it. Do 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 do. Ooh. Ooh. That does not look good. It's like corroded, heavily corroded. It's almost as if the battery acid wore away the paint over time. This thing's in rough shape, so I'm not even going to bother. Uh... If this was in good working condition, the value would still be only like five bucks because this was inexpensive during its day, which was like 10 or 12, 15 years ago. So no value on this one. Almost certainly does not work. Vivitar 283 flash. This box isn't looking great so far, so hopefully these older non-branded flashes are the things that I enjoy least probably because they almost always have acid inside. If I want to have some acid inside, I'll test this one and see if it works later. But this is one that if it was working, I would probably pair with, with something. It's for older 35 millimeter film cameras. What's this? Sony HDR SR5 camcorder. It has a built-in memory of 40 gigabytes. And these guys actually, they have night shot, which is cool. So if you're shooting at night, you can kind of get that Blair Witch type uh, effect. Kind of a grayish bluish tint, but does a decent job. Um, let's see if this turns on. It has a pretty beefy uh, Sony NP-FH70 battery, which is a good battery. These are often still working after all that time. So I'll get this one charged and see if it works. But in the meantime, I do have a replacement so we can test this and make sure it's functioning. Yeah, that looks good. Power's on. 
LCD looks good. What's that? Oh, just setting the menu. Night shot was set to on. I just turned it off. And oop, accidentally turned the camcorder off. Let me turn it back on. There we go. Let's give it a test through here. Testing, 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 testing. Like I said before, with digital camcorders, I like to test for five or 10 seconds just to make sure audio and video output are working. For the tape-based camcorders, if I'm able to test, then I like to do a little bit longer. Testing, testing, testing. So it is working. Like I said before, with digital camcorders, I like to test for five or 10 seconds just to so make sure audio. So that's great. So this camera, this camcorder is in uh, good working condition. And I've sold this model a fair amount. Uh, it either charges with removing this and putting it into a battery charger, or it has a AC charger on the side. It closes the, the latch like that. But it's in overall good condition. Um, I think this normally came with a cradle that you were able to charge it with. Uh, but normally I include a replacement battery charger. And then uh, if I have a Memory Stick Pro Duo, then I would include that as well because I believe you're able to take uh, four megapixel still images with this, if you are so inclined. Value on this camcorder is about $100 when you pair it with the accessories I was talking about. So that's uh, not bad. First one on box seven, Sony HDR. Uh, we have a cheap uh, waterproof, I think this is a disposable film camera. So, no real value there. Ooh, Canon Zoom XL. Beefy, beefy 35 millimeter film camera. Sold a few of these. I think you access the battery tray through. Oh, is that it? Oh, I was making it much harder than it should have been. It uses a two CR5 battery, which I have. It was just, I thought you had to unscrew it a lot, but it was one of those where you just have to rotate it like 45 degrees. Power's on. I found the power on button, but it's not, uh, the lens isn't moving in and out. It's getting stuck. See that? And then it won't actually take a picture. So I'm gonna have to try to mess around with this a little bit more. If any of you are Canon Zoom XL owners, am I doing something wrong? I'm flipping it from L to A. Camera's powering on, but the lens isn't really moving out and it's getting stuck. And there's no other adjustments and no other buttons are working. So if you know anything more about this, let me know. I'm not gonna assign a value to it right now. What else we got? Oh, Canon. Canon uh, SureShot Supreme. Sold a few of these. Often have issues. But maybe we will luck out here. This is the thing that is broken the most in this camera, is the lens open. That, it, this button, for whatever reason, I've seen degrade and wear over time, so oftentimes it's missing and then you can't actually uh, open the shutter, it gets stuck. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this one will be working. This uses, uh, the pain about this one is it actually uses a two, um, Phillips screws. Ah! Screws meet screwdrivers. Got it. And it uses two CR5 bat. So I'll just put one in for now because if this camera's not working, then I just wanna get my battery out easy. Okay, power's on. Lens looks decent. Um, let's, uh, let's see if it works. 
Okay, we didn't get a flash. And I don't think this camera has a way to manually fire the flash. Let me try shooting down here. There we go. That should work now. Okay. So yeah, this camera appears to be in good working condition. Don't have film to test, but uh, the value on this Canon SureShot Supreme with the case, even though the case is a little bit worn. And when I sell film cameras, I do try to include a battery just uh, so they can kind of use it out of the gate because I know it's frustrating when you get something and there's no battery and it's maybe a battery you're not familiar with. So I try to include a battery and I will for this one. In used good working condition with the case, you're looking at a value of about 60, 65 here. So with the case, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bump it up to 65. Minolta Freedom 2 35 millimeter film camera. And this guy's got a bit more wear. Let's see how the battery department. Oh, it's got a, so if, if you've watched the channel for a while, you've probably heard me talk about inventive ways that people have tried to fix their cameras that are broken. And in this case, it looks like the battery door broke. And what they did was actually insert a little bobby pin in the side, made a little hole so the battery latch connects. Yeah, and there's corrosion inside. Okay, I'm gonna look, look at this one a little bit later. If this was tested in good working conditions, not a huge amount of value, um, like 20 bucks probably in its current condition. Uh, but I'm not gonna assign a value to this one right now. I like the inventive way that they, they repair the battery door though. That is pretty, pretty slick compared to a lot of the ones that I've seen. Ooh, Olympus Stylus Epic Zoom 80. Port State. Sounds good. Normal. These Olympus uh, stylus cameras, like I mentioned in one of my last videos, are uh, pretty popular and uh, quite well performing film cameras. They handle the elements well and they were pretty well built. Um, this one was, the parts were made in Japan and it was assembled in China. Use my little viewfinder here. Yep, cool. So again, I don't have film to test this, but it does appear to be in decent working condition. Just get it cleaned up a little bit. And the value of these uh, Infinity Stylus Epics in both silver and black are actually pretty good. Um, this guy's gonna sell for about 115 in its current condition. Uh, Vivitar 110 Tele. Uh, 35 millimeter film camera. A value there, that would probably be a donate. There's a lot packed in here. This is actually uh, looking decent so far. Not bad at all. Olympus FE100, little compact four megapixel. Yeah, it uses XD. So I'm gonna put in uh, one of my XD cards and we will see how it does. Power's on, taking a picture right now with the flash. Cool. This little guy's actually in pretty good shape. Get the lens, clean, lens cleaned up a little bit. Battery door looks fine. Uh, a lot of times you would see, again, like a lot of corrosion, but no corrosion in this, so it wasn't probably stored with batteries. Noisy lens. Cute little digicam. Uh, I would say the value on this camera, I've sold this in the FE110 and FE120 quite a bit. Value on this guy is going to be right in that $20, $25 range. So we will say $22.50. No, that would be too hard. Let's say $20. Canon PowerShot SD800. Whenever you see a lens that looks like that, you run. And you run fast in the opposite direction. No, I'm just kidding. Probably not gonna work, but we can try. I think this uses a Canon NB5L battery. Batteries in hand. Do, 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 do. The sound of a camera, lens error. Okay, put that in the four parts area. This was a Canon, this was a Canon PowerShot SD800 and in good working condition, much better than this, the value would have been like 30 to 50 but uh, no value on this one for now. 
big old JVC VHS camcorder. So, um, as I've said in a few other videos, uh, these have their own batteries that are often missing, and it's hard for me to test because I don't have AC adapters for these. It's not something I'd like to really sell that much because they're huge, they're very expensive to ship, and they're not often working. So, it's not something I intentionally seek out, really. But if this was tested in good working condition, normally the value for these is 30 to 50. Uh, but tested is the key there. So you would actually want to tape test these with a tape inside. So. What do we got here? Uh, it's got a missing rubber viewfinder cap. It's a Sony Handycam. It's broken on the top. Sony Handycam, the DCR HC32. This looks very dicey. That's just an optional adapter. Super dicey. This is a mini DV tape camcorder. So I do have a battery. We can at least test and see if it powers on and maybe works, but it doesn't look promising. Powers on. We've got the blue screen. So this uses one of was one of one. This was one of Sony's first handycams that used the touchscreen. Um, this is a fairly early touchscreen, and oftentimes the touchscreen on the DCR HC series are broken. It's one of the biggest issues that I've seen. And the tape mechanism in these, I don't think we've gone through a mini DV camcorder on this channel yet. This is the tape mechanism, so it does extend. A lot of times this is broken too because there's tons of moving parts in here. Like when you when I close it, you can actually see the gears and everything spinning around in there. So it appears that the cover is not open. It appears that the uh, that part of it is working fine. Dang it, I, uh, touch screen's not working. No bueno. And if you can't, if you don't have a working touch screen on this, then you can't access a lot of things in the menu that you need to. So that's a huge bummer. Still a little bit of value in broken because it is test, it is powering on, and at least the uh, tray opens and closes normally. Um, but this is something that I would sell for parts, and the value on this for parts isn't much, uh, probably like 15 bucks. If this camcorder was t tape tested in good working condition, the value on the DCR HD32 is like 100 bucks. Ooh, mystery camera. Mmm. See what we got in here. We've got a Kodak Easy Share with a cable. Kodak Easy Share CX6230. I'm having flashbacks to the last box because we had so many dang Kodaks in there. It just seemed like every other camera was a Kodak. This one's got battery acid residue on the bottom of the door, and the top looks okay. So this one may actually work once we test it, but I'm going to put this in with the batch lot that I'm going to do of testing and cleaning all of the battery posts that have acid on them. So no value on this for now. If this was tested in working condition, I have a value of about 20, 25 bucks. Do, 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 do. Oh, we got two. We got a hanger on. We got two film cameras here. So we'll start with the Canon. Canon SureShot Max with a 38 millimeter f3.5 lens. Let's flip that. Let's check the film area. It's okay. So the thing that you have to do is push it in and then manually close it. So this one actually still works. You just have to do it the hard way. So th that's good to know. So now we can actually test this and, uh, and see. See our 123 battery? Turn it on. I heard something. We'll open the lens. Lens moves out. This doesn't have a zoom lens, I don't think. It's a fixed lens, so there's no way to, uh, to move it in and out. So we will, I have the flash set to on. I'm gonna look through the viewfinder. It looks a little bit cloudy, so there's quite a bit of dust in there. Oh, cool. Yeah, that, that's good. Uh, it appears to be functioning fine. It does have a fair amount of uh, 
wear on it, so that's something that you would note and take pictures of. But let's turn it back off. Noisy, so you would want to note that as well. And then the, the film door thing. So the value on this guy, um, in its current condition, once I clean it up a little bit, is going to be about 30 bucks on this Canon SureShot Max. Next one up is this Discovery 270 zoom date with the lens stuck out and there's plastic is like melted on or was hit really hard on the side can't really see it very well it doesn't look promising uh, but I'll test this one later even if it was working in really good condition not a whole lot of value here so see what we can do there but still a cool I mean not a bad camera drop in loading Okay, we've got a Canon in a case. Canon SureShot 76 zoom date, and I have sold this camera before. Looks to be in actually pretty good shape. I think this uses a CR123. Yeah, flip it to auto. No. Another Olympus. Nice. Olympus stylus with the 35 millimeter f3.5 fixed lens. This is a cool camera. And in black. Black seems to add a little bit of value too. Even if you have this, there's a few models they made in both black, silver, black and silver. Um, this one's got some body wear, but otherwise it looks decent. So let's find a battery. I think it uses a CR123. It does. Going through CR123s at a fast clip here. Power's on. I'm gonna do a flash test real quick. Didn't see it. Did it flash? Oh yeah, cool. Nice. Cool. This is a pretty valuable camera, actually. Um, in fair, I would say this is fine or fair working condition. Um, the value on this is gonna be between 125 and 150. So I'll go ahead and put 150 for now. I'd say this guy is approaching the gold nuggets, gold nugget level because this alone kind of pays for the box. Um, so that's a really great find. P Photo Smart M525. The HPs keep coming. Got a bunch of HPs in the last video, a bunch of Kodaks. If you haven't checked out that video, and you can watch them independently or watch them uh, consecutively, but I'll go through, like I have on the screen, the per box cost as well as the overall um, projected uh, sales. Power's on, lens moves in and out. Kind of nice to be testing a good old uh, digital camera. Flash fires, looks good. Nice. Yeah, really pretty decent condition here. Uh, value on this camera is going to be about 25 bucks. HP PhotoSmart uh, M525. JVC camcorder, and it's a JVC GRD250. This uses the short squat VF707U. I need to get a charger for this uh, so I can test it. As I was saying in some of my last videos, these particular models, these particular models are mini DV. And what I found over the years in testing a lot of these is their overall chance of working is actually very low. If it's working, it's actually not a bad camcorder comparable to like Sony and Canon. But uh, for some reason they did not age well and uh, the overall chance of having uh, some sort of defect that prevents it from working properly is very high. So no value on this one. For now, we've got a Samsung big 35 millimeter camera AF Zoom 1050 here, but unfortunately it's missing the battery door. So no value on that one. Put it in my parts area. Okay. Oh, neat. K1 
Canon SureShot 115U2 date, 35 millimeter, really pocketable uh, film camera. Sold a number of these over the years as well. It's in really pretty decent shape. You like to see it. No. Got to put the battery in the right way. Otherwise the camera won't work. Okay, power's on. Let's move the lens in and out. Yeah, that looks good. Very good zoom on this uh, film camera. Noisy? Look through the viewfinder and we'll take a picture real quick. Nice. Value on this 35 millimeter film camera is gonna be about 50 bucks. We've got a Minolta Freedom Zoom 140EX 35 millimeter film camera. And it uses two CR123s, I think. Hard to tell. Yeah, that's right. Turn on. Noisy. Does appear to be functioning normally. Lens has a little bit of dust. I'd have to clean that off. Let's uh, let's see if the flash fires. Yep. Cool. This does require a little bit of cleaning. Uh, value on this camera is going to be about 30, 35. I'll go on the lower end and say 30 for this camera. With a battery. The Freedom Zoom 140. So that was the last camera. And by my calculations that I just did, hopefully they match with what I have on the, the screen, wherever it's at, mm, 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 mm. Um, we're 600, roughly or right around 605 on that second box. So first box we had was what? 610? So 610, roughly 600 on each box. That's $1,200. That'll take us a long way to getting to our overall target of $6,000. And I thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time to see if we can uh, continue to march towards that $6,000 target.